Psalms chapter 19, and uh, we're going to read all 14 verses. It says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter a speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoicing, rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from <clears throat> the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is pure, is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, much more than fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is a great reward. Who can understand his heirs? Cleanse thou me, cleanse thou me from the secret faults. Keep back thy servants also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in the sight of the, in the sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Our gracious heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the reading of your word. Lord, I just ask you to help me, Lord, with what you laid upon my heart to teach this morning. Uh, Lord, just help it be a blessing to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first thing I'm going to look at is we just see um, in verse number 1, we see the declaration. It talks about the heavens declare the glory of God. Uh, we also know the Bible tells us we're without excuse to look around and know that there is a God in heaven. Um, we're without excuse over what we've seen take place and not know uh, that God is always there, that God can take care of us. God will get us through anything, even what we've been through over the last year. Um, God will get us through anything. Um, you know, being the, the golf fan that I am, uh, I, I, the main reason why I can remember everything took place about a year ago was because this is the week of the Players' Championship uh, down in Florida. This is the week that they played Thursday last year. Uh, come off the golf course, had every intention of playing the rest of the tournament, and then at 9 o'clock that night, they shut it down. So this is the week, and if you remember that they was playing conference basketball tournaments last year and, and shut everything down, uh, some of them pulling players off the court. Um, but yet, look how God, good God has been to us over that last year. Um, are we willing to declare the same way the heavens do uh, the glory of God? Uh, not only do we see that declaration, but we see in verse number 2 the day-to-day. Day unto day utter a speech, and night unto night show with knowledge. Day unto day, he's there for us. Doesn't matter where we're at, doesn't matter what we're going through, doesn't matter what we're faced with, doesn't matter what's coming tomorrow, day to day, God is still there. Down to verse number 7, though I want us to look at the uh, decree, so to speak, it talks about. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. How do you look at the decrees and the law of God? Do you look at it as something that, that I have to keep because it keeps me out of trouble, or, or I have to do because this is what God tells me to do? You know, our pastor talks about it all the time. You know, it's, we should not look at, at uh, the things that, that we do it should not be about God telling me to do this or God uh, making me do this. It should be the fact that we get to worship Him and we get to do things for Him and we get to do the certain things. Uh, our pastor always talks about it. He does all the uh, drinking he wants to do, all the drugs he wants to do, all this. He just, don't want to have, he just don't want to do those things. And that's how too many, I'm afraid, that at times we look at uh, the laws of God and we just look at the statutes of the Lord and we look at certain things that... Uh, you know, it all comes down to question. Did you get to come to church this morning, or did you have to come to church this morning? Pretty simple. Did you get up this morning and come to church because, well, it's Sunday, i got to be there. And, and, you know, and this morning I most definitely got to be there because they're going to talk about those that weren't there when Brother Doug was out of town. So now I know i got to be there. Or did you get up this morning looking forward to the fact, I get to go to the house of God this morning. I get to see what God's going to do for us today. It's a new day. We got Brother Mike up with us. And who knows what God might move in and do this morning. How is it that we look at the decrees of God? We see a desire in verse number 10. More to be desired are they than gold, 
Yea, much more than fine gold, sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. I'm about to fry. I don't know if it's nervousness or if it's really that hot, but I'm about to fry. What are your desires this morning? Pretty simple. What do you desire? If God don't change my mind a little bit of what I'm going to preach on, I'm supposed to preach here on Wednesday night in a couple weeks, is just simply, why is the revivals this summer coming up? Why is the revival we have in April? Why is the camp meeting we have in July? Why are they going to be any different? Why are they going to be any different? I was talking to Brother Mike last night. This June, I believe it is, will be 20 years that me and Tina first visited the church. I bet we've seen over 100 meetings probably in that time, Brother Ray. Probably close to it. There was a bunch. It used to be back in the day. I remember we would meet over in that old building. We'd have one, one or two a month. We'd have them all the time. Boy, God would just move in and do great things. And God moved in last summer and did a great, great work around here. Why then do we find ourselves, and I'm going to preach the message now, I guess I won't get to preach in a couple weeks, I'd figure out something else, ain't it? Why do we find ourselves falling back in the same rut time after time after time? Why is this one going to be any different? Why aren't we still in that same state of revival now that we had last June and July? What's it going to take to be any different? What do you desire? If we desire to come in and have revival, we desire to come in and see God do something, we can have it. We can have it. You know, you know, I, I've not watched hardly any college basketball at all this year. Um, I don't know why. I just I never got back into it. Everything stopped and everything shut down, and I was aggravated and frustrated at a bunch of stuff going on, and I just never turned it on. Well, yesterday I was sitting home, and I decided I knew UC was playing, so I was like, well, I'll flip over and see what UC's doing. Josh, they're like, they were 10-10 and 10 or something like that going to the conference tournament, and they played in a championship game today. And you could tell what it mean to those kids. How much does it mean to us to have revival? How much does it mean to us to have God show up? What kind of, do we, do we display that same type of passion in church that these athletes will, you know, for their conference tournaments and, and to make the tournament and stuff this week? Or do we just come going through the motions? What are our desires? And the last thing by way of introduction is we see in verse number 13, it talks about having dominion over us. Keeping back, keep back thy servants also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Do you allow, have, do you allow sin to have dominion over you? If you're saved, God's forgiven you. But too many times we allow that sin, we allow the devil to get in our mind, we allow the devil to throw those things back at us and have dominion over us and rule over us, and we make ourselves convinced that God can't use us for something. We make ourselves convinced that we're not worthy to be used to God, which I can tell you I'm not worthy to be used, but God can still use us. This book is full of people who just did some heinous things, and God still used them to do great, great things uh, for Him. Well, what I want to teach on is found there in verse number 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Now, I want to teach this with this question in mind, and I'm going to try to go slow, I promise, so that way we don't have all kinds of time uh, uh, in between services. We Put it this way, if we get done early, we'll go see how many donuts the kids didn't eat, and we'll all go have donuts. We might have to cut them up and spread them in half. We'll see how many donuts are left that the kids didn't eat this morning. This question in mind. Is it acceptable? I'm not talking acceptable to me, Brother Donald. I'm not talking is your life or whatever you may do acceptable to, uh, to Miss Crystal. I'm talking is it acceptable unto God? The first thing is our speech. Is our speech acceptable unto God? When we think of our speech, a lot of times that we, we immediately start talking about and we, the first thing that pops into our mind is just uh, uh, being vulgar, having vulgar speech. Uh, I told Brother Mike, I went and played golf with Brother Mike yesterday, and we were finishing up on the 18th hole when we played out of Kenton County, and there's two different golf courses out there, Brother Charlie, and we're on 18 on one, and there's a guy on hole number three on the other course, and he starts unleashing some language, and I'm talking, we are four or 500 yards from this fellow, Brother Chitty, and we can hear him like he's standing next to us. And I'm like, what in the world? And I told the guy I was playing with, I'm like, the bad thing is, he's only on hole number three. He's got a whole lot of golfing left to do. He's already in that kind of shape. But we immediately start thinking about that kind of thing. 
we immediately start thinking about if we use vulgar language and having our, our speech be clean. But I'm not talking about just that. Is our speech about others acceptable unto God? If God was to, if we was to truly understand it and truly believe that, that God's nestled down, sitting right there next to us, and can hear everything that we say, would he be okay with that? Well, he would be okay with that when we're talking to our friends or we're talking to our buddies and we're talking about somebody or, and we think, think that they, they don't know and they don't hear and they might not ever find out. But God still knows. God still knows. In 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse number 10, and you'll know this, if you remember, God tells Solomon he can ask for whatever he wants. And we know Solomon asked for the wisdom, what he asked for, and it says in 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse 10, and the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Does our speech please the Lord? What comes out of our mouth is it pleasing unto God? In public, in private, in every setting. See, I think that we, we this, maybe this is just me. You know, we claim that we understand and we believe that God's everywhere. But we sure don't live that way a lot of times. We sure don't act that way a lot of times. We think it's fun or it might be funny to make snide comments or rude comments about somebody at certain times. God can still hear. Is that acceptable unto God? Not only our speech, but our, in our sharing of the gospel. That didn't take very long, Brother Randy. You're going to have to come down so we can sing to you. In the sharing of the gospel, Matthew chapter 28, and verse 19 through 20, we all know the two verses. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. How often do we share the gospel? Is it acceptable to God and how often we share the gospel? Is it acceptable unto God and how often we will tell others about Jesus? Is it acceptable unto God? When was the last time we invited somebody to church? Uh, you know, we have, uh, I, um, I don't mean to, um, I'm not trying to embarrass him, but Bob, correct? visitor this morning. Brother John invited him. Brother John, I don't know that Brother John's ever joined a church. He just comes and drives from however far away Milan, Indiana is. I have no idea. Far enough. You know how many times we've seen him invite people to church and how many people he brings with him to church from that far of a distance? How many times we walk across the street to our neighbors and invite them to church? How many times have we told our, our family invite him to church? How many times do we just, we just go through our day and we think, and I'm guilty of this. Hey, look, I've invited my brothers. I've invited my sister. My sister's come to church several times, and I've invited them so many times, and I'm, I'm just tired of inviting them. Does, does God tell us at any point in time it's time to stop? Does God ever give us instruction on, well, they haven't come the last ten times you invite them, so you can just stop and go on? No, we should still be inviting people. We should still be sharing the gospel with people. We should still, and not only just, in, and whether it be something as simple as passing out a track, you know, we still have these papers up here uh, um, from, from Brother Bob Martin a couple weeks ago uh, uh, talking about witnessing and, and how to witness and different things we can do and all that. And, and I'll never forget the story that he talked about uh, wherever he was at. And there, was it the restaurant or something? He handed the lady a track and she wanted to give it away. And, and Brother Chitty, he said that this lady worked, she didn't have to work. Her husband made over six figures. But she worked a job 40 hours a week just so she could tell others about Christ. How many times do we go out of our way to be able to tell somebody else about Jesus? Do we live our life as an example to tell others about Jesus? You know, I was talking to uh, Brother Mike last evening. He was talking about different people coming up and selling, uh, asking him, so you're a preacher, aren't you? When was the last time anybody approached us and says, you're a Christian, ain't you? I can just tell by the way you act. I can just tell by the difference in how you act. I can tell by the difference in just your demeanor that there's something different about you. Is it acceptable unto God in the way we share the gospel? Is it acceptable unto God in how we display our strength? What do you mean, Brother Josh? Do you fall apart or do you stand tall? How do you deal with things? Do we truly believe God always has our best interest at heart? Do we truly believe that God always knows best? 
Why then is it if something happens in our life, if when we're faced with something, that too many times we just fall apart? I don't know what I'm going to do. This is going to happen, and this is going to happen, and, and I have no idea what, what I'm going to do in my job or, or this. I'll never forget um, Brother Josh, not too long after I had started, we used to work same place till he, you know, he decided he was going to be smart and go into business for himself. So I'm still stuck there because I'm not good enough to do anything on my own. Uh, but when I first worked and I went in uh, and worked at, at, in the part that we call Boeing, and we was making stuff, and we would make um, the, the easiest way to explain to anybody is you think of two by fours in the walls. That's what we made for airplanes. They just go in a big circle and they go around the walls of airplanes. And at the time, we were making about 100 of those a week, Brother Mike. We were super busy. And we went in one day, and hey, we're going to be working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're going to have to rotate shifts, and we're going to have to, you're going to have to do this and do that. And it was going to be crazy. We was going to work three days this week and four the next, and it was going to be nuts, Brother Donald. And it was going to obviously include working Sundays on how he was going to do. And when I first heard about that, I was like, well, I'm going to have to quit. I, was, I, I can't work on Sundays. I'll just have to quit. And I was like, no, what? God will work it out. It'll be okay. Two weeks later, Brother Donald, they're trying to figure out where there's him people because we don't have enough work to do. You know, God knows what we need. God, know, God knows what's going on in our lives. So do we? does our strength rely on him? Or do we fall apart when something goes wrong? How have you dealt with everything when you look back at this time last March? How did you deal with everything that went on? Was you one of those people that, that, that just fell apart and lived in fear this whole last year? Uh, uh, you know, I know Miss um, Tina talked about some gentleman wanting to come in and get the vaccine the other day and, and called and said that he got all scheduled for it, wanted to know if he could come in through lawn and garden and just sit down and get a shot and leave, not left his house. Not left his house. I can't imagine. Not left his house in a year. I mean, I mean, sure, maybe if he's had to go to the grocery or something, but for the most part, he has stayed cooped up in his house and didn't want to have to be around anybody even to come in and get the vaccine. Just wanted to run in and, and, and get his shots and, and run back out. I can't imagine living in that fear. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer. When God says it's my time to go, I'm, it's my time to go. I can get COVID. I can, I, can, I can trip off this stage walking down here between Sunday school and church and trip and fall and break my neck and, and go into eternity. You know? What is, is God satisfied? Is it acceptable unto God in our strength? It is, is it acceptable unto God? And I'm going to add this one on. I thought about this one just uh, actually this morning. In our, I'm trying to think of the right way to use it or the right way to say it, but just in our sanctuary attitude. When we come in here, when we come in here each and every day, what is our attitude when we walk through those double doors back there? What is our attitude when we walk into God's sanctuary? Are we just here because, as I said earlier, because we have to be? Are we here because we want to be? Are we here because we're looking forward to uh, being able to worship Him? Are we here because we're just looking forward to what God's going to do? Or is it just, nah, it's Sunday. It's what I have to do on Sunday. Just like going to work on Monday, I get up on Sunday and go to church. Is it acceptable unto God? I try to go slow. I told you all. I'm, I'm just, I'm not very long-winded, and this is all I got, Brother Randy. You got anything you want to add to it? I keep picking on you this morning. I figured pick on somebody. Is it acceptable unto God our study? We all know the verse, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Is our study acceptable unto God? What does your study look like? I have thoroughly enjoyed the Wednesday nights. Talking about Baptist distinctives. And there are, and look, do not do not get me wrong, there are a lot of things that our pastor has brought out that have been wonderful, that I didn't know, things that I didn't understand. But there's also still a lot of things that he's brought out that probably a lot of us didn't know or didn't understand that we should know and should understand. There are a lot of things that he's talked about that, that, that's not that hard to rightly divide that we can know. Now, there are things in there that have been difficult that if, to, to understand certain things that he's talked about. I don't, I don't remember now which one it was a few weeks ago. 
uh, uh, talking about the holy city and uh, Jerusalem and just the new Jerusalem and all certain things and, and, and going and getting the verses and what everything, how everything lines up. That is something I hadn't ever set and rightly divided and, and done all those things. But there's a lot of things that we should know. There's a lot of things that, that I believe that, that the Lord has directed him to study, that the Lord has directed him to give us, that we should have already known. But what is our study? Our study is not like taking the Bible and treating it like the newspaper. We should not be sitting down and reading it. It is important to read your Bible. I believe in reading it. I, I personally believe in it. And I tell them in jail all the time, I'm not going to tell you sit down and read a chapter a day or a book a day. If you read one verse and you allow it to do something in your heart, uh, read that one verse at the start of every morning. That's up to you. But we should be willing to sit down and use it to apply to our lives and apply it. Not just sit down and read it like the newspaper and sit down and read this uh, uh, Psalms 19 today and get up and not be able to tell you a thing that it says. And too many times that's what happens. Too many times we sit down and we read and we allow the devil to get in our mind and we allow bad thoughts to get in our mind and we allow all the things that we have to do the rest of that day to get in our mind and we get done reading and we're like, what did I just read? I have no idea what I just looked at. Read it again. You know, and if it takes you reading three times, start getting up ten minutes earlier to read it three times through. Whatever it may be. Is our study acceptable unto God? That study is what helps us when it comes to that time sharing the gospel. I believe too many times it is we are too scared to share the gospel because we're scared of the questions that we might be asked. Well, if I tell somebody they got to do this, what if they ask me this and I don't know? Well, one, just tell them, you don't know. I'm the type of person that never bothers me to tell you, I don't know. I have no idea. But too many times if we would just do a little bit more time studying, we'd be able to answer those questions. We'd be able to direct those things direct people to those things. We'd be able to show them certain things. This world is full of all kinds of different religions and all kinds of different beliefs and all kinds of different things that people have questions about. We, might not, we won't know the answer to all of them, but if we spend our time studying the way God wants us to study, we might know a lot of them. Is it acceptable unto the Lord? One of the things I've heard pastors say a whole lot of times, when we get to heaven, we'll all wish we had done more. And it's important to keep in mind when I ask that, when it talks about this, in verse number 14, to let thy words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. doesn't say our wife's sight, not our husband's sight, not our kid's sight. It's in the Lord's sight. You ask yourself each and every day, you know, maybe it'd be good to have for us to ask when we go, if you go to bed at night, Lord, was everything I did today acceptable unto you? Were you pleased with how I live my life today? Were you pleased with how I directed others to you today? Were you pleased with how I directed others in their life today? Because I'm afraid too many times we get to looking at everybody around us and we'll do anything we can to please others. We'll do anything we can to be acceptable in front of others. I want so-and-so to like me, or I want so-and-so to be happy with me. I want uh, my mom and dad to be pleased with me, or I want this one to be pleased with me, when the only person we are going to answer to in the end is going to be God. That's the one we have to be worried about, of it being acceptable unto. When God looks at our life at the end of each day, can we say, I believe I had a good day. I believe God would be accepted with what I did today. Now, I'm not telling to say that to be full of ourselves or anything like that. But we know the difference. When it gets to the end of the day or we get to the end halfway through a day, we know the difference in if God would be pleased with us or not. That's pretty pretty simple, I believe. You know, could just be me, but that's my belief. Is it acceptable? Is what we do acceptable day after day before God? Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.